Not long ago, this old mess would have given me a laugh. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for a Good time. evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize uh. me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you. It's time. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? I really don't know. I heard he'd been abducted. I don't know if he's back. Who could tell me then? About the sad saint. I'll try asking Tom what's about him. Okay. What do you do for a living? What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night. And then I drink some more. How do you pay for all of that? Why do you drink so much? Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine coming at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Do you work at all? Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon, I'll drink at night. Okay. Anything you like about this district? Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly. So joyful. <laughs> no reason at all to rejoice, then? Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. Okay. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts. Fire. Broken window of the shoe shop. The torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just... Leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. So we have an investigation for him. You must have had dreams when you were younger? What? Surely you must have had dreams and oh. expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure, I wanted things to change. To really change, and to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. You're an idealist then? Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist and I believed that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Is the world that bad? Do you really think the world is that bad? No, I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. Hmm. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes, I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. <laughs> All right, I don't... Oh, tell me about your youth. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you still see your comrades? Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean. No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. 
You believe in a bloodless revolution? Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. Hmm. All right, that's all we got for now. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Where does your investigation go? Oops. That's that's not what I wanted. All the way down there. I don't know if we have any other reason to go that way. Oh, I think at some point we do. But I might go do it anyway. I should have offered a drink to the boy. Evening, miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Never mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. By the way, I'm Jonathan. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the Turquoise Turtle then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish. How can I help you? I got one hint for you. Oh, I'm looking for Sean? Miss Cavendish, would you be willing to help me locate Sean Hampton? You better ask Tom, sir. Why yeah. not answer me directly? We respect the privacy of our customers here, sir. Only Tom can decide who to speak to and what he'll say to them. Hmm. About the docks? What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. Uh... Okay, so apparently our response doesn't matter here. No one feels safe? So you and your friends all feel in danger? No exceptions? Tom's the only exception I've come across until now. But he's... He's not like everybody else. Hmm. About the pub. This place seems... How shall I put it? Very colourful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. <laughs> the bar is neutral territory. So this bar is neutral territory then? Yeah. Tom's convinced this is something the locals need. No one ever draws a weapon here. That's one of the reasons I accepted the job. Your boss must be quite the negotiator. Your boss must be quite the negotiator to force such an agreement. Yeah. Tom's a great bloke. Mr. Hampton, who runs the night asylum, he's the only other man that's able to keep peace around here. Hmm. Um, where are you from? Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? Hmm. No. Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the color of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburne, and of course Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry if I worried you. I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Nosy. My dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London. And here I am. Uh, about your feelings for Tom. Sabrina, tell me about your true feelings for your boss. I love Tom. Not ashamed of it. Don't care if the customers joke about it neither. Who's mocking you? Who's mocking you? I mean, we're always together. People will talk, won't they? Does Tom love you? Does Tom love you? Yeah, but he's always reluctant to take it further. It's not because I'm younger, or because of the colour of my skin. He hates jokes about us. Well, you're gonna get that. Unfortunately. We're just in here. 
Okay. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. I'm looking for Sean. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? Um, did he return to his flock? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Well, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. It would explain his faith and need to help everyone. Got a hint there. Uh, I need to find him quickly. The important thing is I find him quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. Okay, well, that was easy. About this part of town? What can you tell me about this part of town? It's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint of the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. How can you keep this place open? How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. Antagonist point of view? I see. So you get pressure from all sides about how this place should be run, do you? Well, something like that. Nothing that a few wise words and a bottle of gin can't solve. Hmm. You're something of a figurehead. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. Anything I can do? Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. And with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps... With you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. <laughs> All right. About Sabrina's fear. Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She just has to learn to control it. <laughs> She seems really fond of you. Sabrina seems very fond of you, Tom. I like her too. I really do. I know I'm her boss and I'm much older and all. But I like her for sure. What is bothering you then? Sabrina is an angry one. She wears it like a coat. I'm not sure I can make her shed that anger. Uh, it hurts to see her like that. Hmm. Well, I don't have anything else for you. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Can I get back behind here? Uh, just out of curiosity. Like these are good drinks just as likely to cause a problem as to solve one. Anything back in here? No. Oh, goodness. You just have a little kitchen area. That's cool. And I believe there's nobody upstairs anymore. To see them wet boot boys get what's coming to them. Still here. 
but nobody in it. So where is your thing? Over there. Okay. Well, I could probably just run over, come right back. Gather information, find Sean Hampton. Okay, let me, I wanna do this first. So run as far away from this place as I can. I'm gonna wait a minute cause there is an investigation that I want. I should have offered a drink to the boy. You're just gonna go clean the floor. All right. I don't think I'm not gonna get what I wanted. All right. Um. So I gotta find my way down that way. Well, that might take me a while. We'll see what happens. Hello, boy. Uh. Hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, so Rufus Kingsbury. And you have anemia, and I... Oh, I can't treat you right now. Any... Do you know about Sean Hampton? Do you know a man who lives in this part of town? A man named Sean Hampton. I'm looking for him. Sorry, sir. I don't know a lot of folks around here. Most prefer to avoid me. Well, I don't think you should talk to him. He may be very sick. Thanks for the tip. You might want to check the turquoise turtle. It's a pub not far from here. The barkeep knows everyone in these parts. What can you tell me about this region? It's all about staying out of trouble. But since most people prefer to avoid me, it's pretty easy. Ever thought about leaving? Oh, why avoid you? Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Have you ever thought about leaving? <laughs> Where else would I go? At least I know these streets and some people around here. This is my city, for better or worse. What do you do around here? What do you do around here, Rufus? I listen to the news on the dock, sir. And I smile at those kind enough to spare me a bob. Do you have a job? Do you have a job? It's hard to work. What with my head and all. Since I was a boy, I've always had trouble remembering what I do and why I do it. Any recent rumors? What do people say about this place? Things have been tense between the wet boot boys and the communists. They both feel they should run the dogs. There's a communist group? Are you alone? Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough? No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. So it looks like this doesn't matter. This city has abandoned so many of its children. It's tragic. I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburn. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. That's good that you have people. I can't help you right now, but later. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Okay, so game saved. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was <sighs> just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions. Or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburne, if you must know. You have a cold and I'm out of cold treatments. 
Looking for Sean Hampton? Any chance you can help me find Sean Hampton? The sad saint. Why would you talk to that cunt? Actually, that's confidential. Really? Well, go ask someone else then. I'm sure Tom Watts will gladly answer you. Wow. Can you tell me about this town? What can you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Someone in particular? Are you thinking about someone in particular? No. Nope. Hate them all. Especially these petty, whining little <laughs> shitbag beggars. Uh-huh. No one deserves your leniency? Is there no one who deserves your leniency, then? Well, Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. Okay. What do you do around here? What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. It's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. Is something bothering you? You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Is it hard to be a good son? Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. At least he likes his mom. <laughs> um, hint required. Okay, that's all we got. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Is his mom... His mom's in a house somewhere. Just don't remember where. Also, can I find your necklace? Oh, I, I literally just have to search around for it. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this back on track. Just so I remember to do it. I don't remember which house your mom is in. There's a rat. Ooh! Cool. I need a cold and... What did the other guy have? Anemia. Let's take care of that. I need... Headache. Cold. And... Headache. Migraine. Anemia. There we go. What? Okay, no, I'm not sleeping. I think the necklace is supposed to be nearby. I remember correctly, it's not far. And go in here? What? Um, oh. Wait, what is- what? Why did you do that, Jonathan? Okay, alright, we don't want to go down there yet. Or at least I wasn't planning on going down here yet. There you are. A wave of bit of death. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. Well, I can help with the cold. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with, but it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Yeah. It's got some... Oh, there you are. Can I come talk to you? Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. 
I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. Can I come in? The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburn. Stella Fishburn. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? <laughs> this isn't creepy at all. <laughs> Please don't stay too long, sir. I, I won't. I'm just gonna, you know, loot your house. And see if there's anything interesting in here. You know, old springs and grease bottles. You don't need those, right? I was wondering if she had a letter or something in her house, but it doesn't look like it. It's locked, locked all right. It's locked. Okay. I can't remember the last time I had a good sleep. I've been nothing but worry. So you have questions about the flu then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. It's your house. You're doing okay. Oh. Um, do you know about Sean Hampton? I'm trying to locate Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where he could be? You talking about the one everyone calls the sad saint? The man who takes care of the homeless? The very same, Miss Fishman. I'm sorry. I don't know where his shelter is. But if you ask around, I'm sure you'll get your answer. Um, how's life here? How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? The epidemic creates violence? Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know. But it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Violence feeds on poverty? Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. What do you do for a living? May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum in exchange for food. Hmm. Your husband died in the war. Did your husband die in the war? Oh no. My Jack was a docker. He died when my Seymour was just a lad. The poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. Well, how do you pay rent? How do you pay the rent then? My Seymour works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. Hmm. Can you tell me about the orphan? The orphan that regards you as a mother. Please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. Can't required. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. Okay, game saved. I'm not sure the epidemic is what worries people most these days. Where did Rufus go? What? Okay. Caught onto her. Oh, there you are. Let me help you out here. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. 
Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. Well, here you go. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let me just make sure I didn't get any new hints. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. It did not save. Okay. Where did you go? Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I got anything new for you, but I want to check. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburn. Okay. What am I doing? All right. Actually, I don't think his the necklace he's looking for is down here. From Seymour. Oh, I did find it. To my beloved mother, Stella. Oh, that's a pretty necklace. From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. And I can't open It's it. locked. I found your mother's necklace in a strange place. Excuse me, sir. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. I found the necklace and the corpses. I have retrieved the gift for your mother, sir. Great. Give it here then and take this for your trouble. I also found the corpses. The ones under which you left the necklace, Mr. Fishburne. Ah, so that's where I left it. I can be a bit stupid sometimes. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, does this matter? Doesn't look like it. You have no remorse? Have you no remorse? You don't even deny your crimes. I have many weaknesses, Dr. Reed, but lying about who I am ain't one of them. You're not a mindless animal, Seymour. Surely you have something to say about these murders. Speak up and I will listen without judgment. Could be right, Dr. Reed. Maybe it'll do some good to confide in a gentleman like you. You being educated and all. Tell me about your victims. Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. Really? How many? How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. No empathy at all. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all. You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. That right. Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common then. Do you take pleasure in it? Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people... All those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. Can you resist? This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum. I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Seek help. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight, especially about my mum. Why is your mother protecting you? Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm a son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I don't think this matters either. Um, 
I do understand her dilemma. I understand your mother's situation. Obtaining justice at the price of betraying her own flesh. It's quite a dilemma. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose. But she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot around my neck. So we need to go talk to her. Hint required for that one. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Let's go talk. That's not door. I don't think we got anything new. Anything new for him. Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reid. I'm not sure the epidemic is what worries people most these days. What can I do for you, Dr. Reid? I have some questions about your son. Your son's gone way beyond simply bullying people. He has a taste for blood, and you know it, don't you, Stella? One night, he told me straight up, in his own words. It was several days after one of his episodes. Why did he confess? Why did he confess? Did you suspect something? No. I guess he wanted his old mum to help him fight his, uh, demons. Did he tell you everything? Did Seymour tell you everything that night? More than I could stand. The words he used to describe his hate, his rage, how he feels when he's done it. Tell me about it. Tell me about these demons Seymour needs your help to fight. Seymour used to be such a happy child. And he is still a helping son most of the time. But when he gets angry, he can hardly contain his rage. All men and women are born innocent, Mrs. Fishburne. But there can be a monster within any of us. Do you think he can be cured, Doctor? Do you think something can extinguish this rage inside my Seymour? Only professional help, maybe. Science has only just begun to investigate the mysteries of the human mind. Currently, we have more assumptions than fact. There ain't no hope, then. Somehow, somewhere, my son has turned into a monster, and nothing will bring him back. Why do you protect him? Stella, I know you are ashamed of your son's crimes. So why do you protect Seymour? I can't report my own son, can I? Not a burden I could bear. Burden? How do you mean? They'd hang him for sure. I won't send my only son to his death. Oh, this is hard. I'm convinced you raised Seymour the best you could. You're not responsible for what he became. If someone ever found the courage to speak to the police, I will take my share. So I'm still missing a hint. Probably through something else. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. Oh, that's a hard situation to be in. I have anything extra for you. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Nope. So long, Rufus. Be careful and take care. Am I really cursed? It would explain so much. I think that's it. I think we're gonna end this here.